Okay, hi, um, welcome, data structures and algorithm students. Um, I had a couple of things that um, I thought I'd talk about today. Um, um, as usual, you know, remember that uh, we do have these help sessions, so um, I'm not always posting them, depending on um, if you know what what happened on on the help session. If anybody, if any students came, if, if there's any information that would be good for everybody, basically, is where I'm usually posting these. Um, so at this point, uh, we are what I'm calling at unit 10 here. We're working on queues. Um, I did notice that um, even though I mentioned that there might be a second video about uh, uh, using queues, um, I didn't make one of those before, um, most likely because I ran out of time. But uh, but really, most of the um, stuff, both, you know, this video is a good one to watch. Um, and hopefully you watch the one where the implementation of stacks as well. Kind of I stepped through, you know, um, did some explanations of the, uh, the, the stack code from last week and, and the Q code that you're supposed to be using for your assignment for this week, you know. So uh, in particular, though, for this week, um, there, you know, we showed both the implementations of the array based and the linked list based, uh, but both of these are using uh, inheritance, right? And that's kind of what I want to talk a little bit about for the assignment 10 for this week on, on queues and the priority queue, because uh, we, we did have our unit where, where we went over inheritance overloading and templates, but the assignment mostly um, concentrate on overloading, okay? So this week, uh, when you do your priority queue, you have to kind of understand a little bit about object-oriented inheritance uh, in C++ to do the priority queue thing, all right? So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that. The, again, the session probably won't be too long unless somebody joins and asks some questions or things, you know, but I haven't had a lot of people joining the interactive sessions. Um, so, you know, once again, if you are watching this video, remember we're having these, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, to discuss with any student, uh, even if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, something that's not generally useful for the class, you can certainly come, um, kind of think of it as sort of um, a, a way of, to contact me, like office hours or something, face-to-face -face videos. So I'll, I'll try to make certain that I always have these sessions up, so. Okay, so let's look at the assignment um, 10 here on cues this week. Uh, let me bring up the assignment description real quickly and read through it for you all. So um, we are using queues and implementing queues here. Um, and uh, we bring up the idea of a priority queue, right? So since we didn't really discuss this a lot, you should have run across it if you did the readings from the, uh, the, the Schaffer textbook that I gave you. So a priority queue is a variation of a queue where you can push items um, in queue items to the end of the queue as usual, but the DQ function works slightly differently. Okay, so when you DQ an item from a priority queue, the, the item that has the highest priority is the one that will come off the queue first, okay? So it, it's not first in, um, first out anymore. It's first in, or well, it's it's, jobs in highest priority out. So that's the, the, the priority queue. So whenever you ask to, to DQ the next item, you get the one with the highest priority where you have to define priority in, in some way. So we're just using simply some number, you know, priority 10 is higher than priority one, you know, or, or whatever the, the priority is that we use, right? We have some idea of an ordering of the priorities from highest to lowest. Um, and if we ask to DQ an item from a priority queue, you should get whatever is, is the highest priority item on the queue, okay? Um, so for this um, assignment, unlike the last one, your first task, um, you actually have to do something for the queue implementation. So the, the previous assignment, you were just using stacks. So you had to use a stack to do, to accomplish a couple of, of functions, right? Some functions using a stack and, and accomplish the algorithm using a stack. So, so we do something with the priority queue, but we first have to implement. So there is no implementation of priority queue, okay? And um, this comes about because basically we're going to use inheritance. So we're going to, um, what I 
tell you to do, what I require you to do is uh, we're going to make a, uh, we're going to inherit from the LQ implementation. So the LQ is a concrete implementation of a Q, of the Q abstract data type using linked lists, okay? So our prior, the priority Q that you implement is going to inherit um, from the LQ. So you have to uh, in inherit um, from, from this LQ class. And basically, all the implementation of the priority queue is the same, except we have to provide a different DQ method. Um, so, so, I mean, and you have to do this from scratch. You have to create a new class called priority queue that inherits. Um, and then the only method that you're going to have listed for the declaration of your priority queue um, is going to be the um the, the dq method okay um oh sorry the the nq method so um, oh so, so i reversed this a little bit so basically what i'm um having you do is instead of inserting the item uh, at the back of the queue um insert the item into the the linked list at the location uh, where it should be based on its priority. Okay, so that way that that we're just going to keep the items ordered by their priority um, on the linked list, um, and that way the, the 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 item with the highest priority should always be at the front of the queue. So then the DQ method is just um, you know you can reuse the implementation of the base class. Okay, so that, that's what we're doing here, right? Um, So, and I described the algorithm that you need. So I'm not going to give this to you, but 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 um, th there's you know a couple of base cases. So for your NQ method, um, like we like we did for the, you can look at the the original NQ for linked list. So, so you always start off by dynamically creating a new node, um, and just fill in that item that that new node with your um, item that you're trying to put in there. Okay. Um, One thing I should mention here, I have this, I mean, I talk about this in the, um, the, the description here, but we assume that your items um, implement uh, less than and greater than operators, or at least less than operator. Um, uh, let's see where I discuss that in here. So um, oh, I, I do it down here in, in the uh, where I talk about the tasks here. So um, so the the items that that are supported to be able to go on this priority queue, you need to be able to call like operator less than operator less than or equal to operator greater than on it. Okay, and what it will return is true or false based on priority. Okay, so if you have two items and compare them by less than the one with, with the lower priority should uh, give give a result of, tr of true um, if you say lower priority you know ask if lower priority is less than the one with the higher priority or should be false if you say higher priority is less than the one with the lower priority right so anyway we're, we're assuming that the um, operators, you know, and we've done a little bit of stuff with operator overloading. So we're assuming that the operators are defined to give a priority based ordering of the items that you're trying to manage on the priority queue. Right? So that, that's part of the assumption here for your priority queue class. All right. So if, if you assume that, that means that, um, so yeah, I mean, if the queue is empty, again, some of this will be pretty similar to the method that you're overriding, the NQ method for the LQ um, base class, uh, well, the, the class that you're inheriting from here, right? So um, um, if it's empty, then you can just set both queue front and queue back to the new item, right? Um, uh, and then uh, a slight, uh, the slightly tougher case, but still relatively easy. If the queue is not empty, but if the item you're trying to insert is higher priority, then it should just become the new head head item, right? So you should um, set queue front to be the new item, um, and queue back will still be whatever it was pointing to 
originally. So, so right, you just make this the new front item if, if it's higher priority. And how can you tell if it's higher priority? Again, you use greater than. So if, if the new node, the new item that you're trying to insert is greater than the item that's at the current head of the um, priority queue, then, then it becomes the new head node. Um, and then the most general case, though, is you have to search, okay? So you have to iterate through, you have to write a little loop um, that fine, you, you keep iterating until you find that the next item is a um, um, lower priority than the item that you're transferring. And then when you find that, you need to insert that between the current item and the next item. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that, but but, but the, the general idea is you have to, you have to search for a position, um, you know, so you'll probably most likely have to keep track of, um, if you keep track of like one, there's one way to do it by just keep keeping track of one node. So you don't have to keep track of a current and the next. If you keep track of the current node and you find the one where the current node has a, a, a greater than or equal priority, but the, 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 no, the next node after the current one's priority is less than the node you're trying to insert, um, then, you, then you can insert it between those two. Um, and depending on how you do that, you, you, you should take care that, um, you know, you're back, the, 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 you don't lose track of what the back item is um, on your queue. Although, uh, admittedly, um, oh yeah, I say this here, um, to tell you the truth, queue back is no longer useful for the priority queue because you don't in queue automatically by putting stuff to the back of the queue, right? So you have to do the search. So it's a really, I mean, you could um, um, you could just ignore queue back. You could just set it to null um, or it, it'll be set to null in your constructor and just never uh, use your queue back. And you should be able to do that and give a successful implementation of your priority queue. So, so yeah, now to think about that, you, you really don't have to worry about um, keeping track of the correct item, which is the last item. Although you still need to make certain that your last item points to null so that you can tell. Um, um, so if you need to insert an item and it has the lowest priority, it needs to end up being the last item. So you need to, you need to tell when you're done searching, when there's no more items, and correctly insert your node as the last node. In there. All right. So let's, um, like I guess I'm, I'm really not going to give you the implementation for this, although, you know, um, as you're implementing this, feel free to ask questions, specific questions, email them to me. Um, but let's look at, um, so, so to do this, I mean, you're going to have to both be changing things in assignment eight, assignment 10. So for this first part, you're actually going to be making modifications to the, the q.cpp and q.hpp file. Um, and for the second part, you're going to implement um, the function in the job simulator, the run simulation, uh, which I won't talk about here today, but I can talk about that Wednesday again, if, if people ask me questions about that as well. So again, if you watch my video for this week, I, I talked about the Q class, kind of stepped through these. We've got an abstract based class, which defines basically the, the interface, the, the API. Um, our textbooks call those an abstract data type, right? It's an important concept. I hope everybody picks up on that in this course. Um, so our, our queue is an abstract data type um, that's defined for you. So the, these uh, equals zero means that these are pure virtual functions. So if you want to inherit from the queue class, you have to implement all these functions that are pure virtual functions. So the clear is empty in queue and so on. And that's what the two concrete implementations that I gave you um, in this file do. So the, um, the AQ is a concrete implementation. We have concrete implementations of the clear is empty and so on, um, and the constructor and the destructor. Um, you know, you need constructors and destructors. Those aren't part of the, the um, abstract data type, but um, um, uh, you have to define those as well. But, you know, we give you those for the, um, the AQ. But notice, here's how you define um, um, something as inheritance, okay? So AQ is inheriting due to using public inheritance. So you might have to go back and, and review our um, 
materials about uh, inheritance if you if you didn't um, do those materials you know didn't, didn't pay attention to those materials well okay so we're publicly inheriting from the q class right and notice yeah so this is this index it's 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 a templatized class so, so here aq is also a template but we say class aq which is a template of inherits from qt and this is how we indicate that it's templatized it's that normal um, um, syntax for, for the the template type here all right Um, and we do the same thing for the LQ class, all right? So this is our, our implementation for the L class. But for when you're working on um, the assignment 10 here, you're going to be creating a class called Priority Q. So the name would be Priority Q, and it needs to inherit from, um, from um, LQ, right? So it'll look similar to this. So you'll be basically copy-pasting um, this part for your LQ. Uh, for your priority queue, but but you're naming your class as priority queue. It's a template class, and it's inheriting from um, the LQ, the linked list queue. Right? And then then really you don't have anything else. So you get since you're inheriting from from LQ, you'll inherit the queue front, the queue back, which you're not going to really use the queue back, but but you'll you'll inherit all these member variables, um, and you'll inherit all these methods, but you need to override. So basically, you're going to just have one public method defined, which, as, as I talked about, would be the in queue. So, so you'll have um, one public function um, in queue, but you won't have anything else. So you won't have any other function. You don't need a con special constructor for your priority queue. You don't need to, to have a different implementation of DQ, and you don't have to define any additional member variables, right? So you can just reuse everything except for in queue. Um, and then likewise, um, you'll have to have the implementation of your in queue. So you know you could start off by cop copying the implementation for L's Q, LQ classes um, in queue, uh, which if you scroll up here, uh, there it is, right? So you can copy and paste this, but but your implementation of NQ is going to be the implementation not of the LQ class, but of the priority Q class. So you would just change that. Uh, and then, like I said, there'll be some, I mean, basically, this will start you off. This will probably could get you past the first, maybe I can look at the unit test here real quickly. But I mean, you know, you need to do start off with the same thing. You create a new node for the new item you're trying to in, trying to enqueue for your priority queue. And if your priority queue is empty, um, you just need to um, make that the, the, the new um, item. Um, and like I said, you can kind of ignore a queue back. So you really, I mean, you can still keep track of it correctly, but you won't really need it for your priority queue, right? So, um, yeah, and that's basically, let's look at the, um, the, the unit test real quickly then. So um, there are some uncommented unit tests in um, assignment 10 here that are just um, testing that the linked list queue um, is working correctly as expected. Or if you make changes like adding a priority queue that you don't break anything, I mean, you shouldn't edit any of the, the methods for the LQ, the linked list queue, but, but if you did something or accidentally add, introduce a typo or something, you know, that this might detect if, if you change something that causes the, the LQ not to work. Right? So anyway, um, oh, and, and yeah, there's some tests for the AQ in there as well, the, the array-based Q, um, and, and trying these with integers and also with strings. So yeah, you go all the way down here. So, so all those things are uncommented. They should all pass with the code as given. So your first thing that you start doing is uncommenting this commented out test for the priority queue. And as usual, I encourage you to, to start by uncommenting this and then um, just adding and make certain you can get things to compile. So in order to get things to compile, you first have, done, have to do most of the steps I talked about. You don't have to have, well, you, uh, you will have to have at least an empty in queue, but, but you'll have to um, make the declaration for your priority queue class uh, with 
uh, nothing overridden in it. The, the, the declaration for your primary queue class that inherits from the LQ, um, and there's nothing overridden in that except for the in queue method. And then you'll have to have the implementation of your in queue method, which is an implementation for the in queue method in the priority queue class, right? Uh, but um, it can do nothing, right? Um, or, I mean, you know, like I said, it, it could basically just have the, 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 the insert into the empty case because that's pretty much the same as the in queue that you're overriding, right? And if you do if, if you do that, and, and if you get it so that it works for the empty case, so initially your queue priority queue will be empty. Um, so I mean, again, all these these methods should work because you're going to be inheriting these from your LQ. You know, so is empty should work, and, and your constructor um, should work to to set the initial queue to be empty with a length of zero, um, and there's an implementation of the two string. So. All right, so, so, that, <coughs> excuse me. so that's all I can think about, um, but that should get you started, right? And, you know, once you get that to compile and run and pass those, you can get it to, pi, you can get it to pass the, um, the first case, which is ensured in the empty, and then you should be able to incrementally add in the rest of these cases, which, um, oops, sorry, which have to do with, um, um, you know, if, if you can get it to work for an empty queue, um, then then next try and get it to work for a queue with only one item, or what? Sorry, a queue where your item that you're trying to insert is has a bigger priority than any of the items. That, that's the that's the next thing that we test. So when we first, um, so we're inserting integers in here. So you can you can compare integers, right? Five is less than ten, and we assume that the integer value. Is, is the priority, right? Where um, um, a, a higher number should be a higher priority, right? right. So, so if you insert an integer 10, it should end up at the front of the queue. 10 has a higher priority than five, right? So if we in queue 10, um, uh, we can check that, you know, that, that if we ask for what the front item is, it should be 10 because you insert an item 10, it has a higher priority than the existing item five, so it should end up being at the front of your queue when you call front or when you call, or when you DQ the item, you should get 10 um, by pulling it out, right? Okay, so that's it. Hopefully that, that's enough of a hint to get you started at least with adding in the, um, um, the priority queue. So um, that's kind of getting that part to work is, is basically worth about half of your assignment. Uh, if I remember right from the um, um, from the rubrics that I have um, here for you, okay. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, and um, yeah, as usual, keep sending me questions if you have them, and I will see you guys um, in our next video then.